What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play of CJ. Today we're going to focus in on the uh, Minnesota Wild projected lines and uh, season preview for next year. Obviously, I've been kind of tough on the Minnesota Wild. Um, you know, kind of been tough on Minnesota uh, all around. Never really been a Minnesota Wild. I just never liked the logo, to be honest with you. I was younger. And, uh, that's kind of why. And then they took suit away from the Preds, so. Whoops. Um, but without further ado, up front, on your first line, you got new addition Zach Parisi on the left. With Amigo Koivu and fellow Finn on the uh, Michael Granlund on the right, I think the best thing to do with Granlund being one of the top prospects in hockey is to do what the uh, Washington Capitals did with the Backstrom his rookie year, just sign him out on the wing, give him less defensive responsibilities, let him learn the nuances to play North American hockey on a sh smaller rink, and, you know, giving him that the benefit of the doubt to uh, you know, defensively, you know, let Koivu take care of that. I think the best thing Granlund will be a center long term, but. Let him start on the wing. Second line, you got Devin Setaguchi on the left. Pierre Marc Bouchard, who I think will bounce back in a pretty solid year after being injured the last couple of years. And uh, Danny Heatley on the right. You know, two shot, two former shots and a career wild right there. Then uh, third line, Kyle Brodziak, Minnesota native Matt Cullen, and uh, Cal Clutterbuck on your right. That's a pretty good third line. Um, you know, I like Cullen's game and Clutterbuck. I love his game. You know, anyone that can hit and put up numbers is, is uh, respectable. And then, um, you know, you got Poe, Zeno, Zena Kanopka, and uh, Tori Mitchell. Was it Leon Poe? Um, on, your, on your fourth line, it's a pretty solid line. Kanopka's got a high face off percentage, just, you know, especially for a guy who's known more for doing this. And, uh, you know, definitely a good, a good glue guy to have in your team. It's someone that'll, uh, you know, keep the opposition honest, which is what you want. And then on the back end, you got a Ryan Suda with Tom Gilbert, two former Wisconsin Badgers. Clayton Stono with Michigan product, Stephen Kampfer, and then uh, Michael Scandella and Jared Spurgeon um, as your third pair. Then between the pipes, Nick Backstrom and, and Josh Harding. Um, I think Harding will win out the goaltender job down the stretch and take him into the playoffs. I think Backstrom's not the guy that's going to win this. Stanley Cup. I'm sorry to break it to you, but he's not. Now, four names. There were a couple names that were notably absent from the wild lineup. Uh, Charlie Coyle, Jason Zucker, Zach Phillips, Brett Bomer, and Jonas Brodine. Best thing to do for Minnesota is start those kids in the Myers. Start them with the Houston Arrows, the AHL, and let them, uh, you know, let them season. Especially just, you know, the judgment process of playing against men. Zucker and Bowman both have a few games when they show under their belt. Phillips, Coyle, Phillips and Coyle have never played against men, and Brodeen never played on North American ice surface. So that's something you got to do. You got to let them grow and develop, and then eventually trade Heatley. Which watch my last piece. I talked about. Um, the Healy for Paul Martin trade, which made sense with both teams, because this defense is the team's Achilles heel. Having a guy like Paul Martin to call Mitt Suter and Gilbert would be your best option. And then by phasing out Healy, you can bring up one of the younger kids to fill that spot once they're ready. It's not worth rushing any of these kids. You know, the Minnesota Wilds have struck out too many times in the draft. You look at um, A.J. Thielen, Benoit Puglia, James Trepid, Colton Gillies, Tyler Kuma, and then trading away Nicoletti for uh, next to nothing. You know, these young players that you would have had in your lineup, you know, all the spots had you drafted someone else. And then a guy like Luddy would really have helped you out, especially, you know, Minnesota kid, Eden Prairie uh, product. Former, I believe former Mr. Mister, Mister Hockey in Minnesota. Yeah, check me on that. But, you know, all those draft picks you flushed down the toilet. Um, you know, now it's the time to, you know, get the get let the young players you have develop and then let them compliment the stop players you brought in through free agency and through Parisi and Suter. Um, in terms of expectations, I think the Wilds will make the playoffs. I think they are a but five or six seed, and I think the weak goal, the weak defense and the inconsistent goaltending will be their Achilles heel. I think they'll be able to score, unlike Minnesota Wild teams in the past. But um, I think they're a year or two away. Let these kids develop and then fill out, you know, the roster spots around Parisi, Suter, and Koivu. And uh, I think Granlin's the only one that plays the whole year in the show. I think his skill is, is too too good to keep in the minors. Even though he could end up in Houston too at some point. Um, in terms of the adjustment process, but we'll see how, it all, see how it all works out. I'm pretty excited to see what the Wild do and uh, see how the free agency signings impact uh, impact them next year. Uh, that's all I got in this episode of the Power Play of CJ on the Minnesota Wild preview for next year. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the offseason and beyond. Later, guys.